Alaval Kulano, Bilat Hashem. Good problems. Lekut Imaran Torah Tesvav. We're starting today. It's Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Rabbein Azichon, and Nebuchadnezzar. starts with a posseg, v'atem t'ilu m'amleches k'hanim v'goy k'odosh You should be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Ele adverim shal d'ber of b'nei Yisrael These are the things that you should speak to b'nei Yisrael. Yeah, the thing that you should say to Bnei Yisrael. That's the possible in Sefer Shmois. <coughs> this is our way. At the end, the Rebbe will show how the whole Asaga is alluded to, is buried in this particular verse. And it says like this, Mi shero itse litre tam oragonos Anybody who wants to taste in this world the taste of the hidden light. I know so the satayo rashi is gola lawsuit. In other words, the i.e. The, the, the mysteries of the Torah that will be revealed in the world to come. Because right now, you know, even the secrets that are in Kabbalah, you know, and, and, and all, everything that is known today is just the, the outer limit of the mysteries of the Torah. They're much deeper and deeper and deeper and <clears throat> even in this world. But there's a whole level, there's a whole level of secrets, of mysteries of the Torah that will, will be revealed after what they call the end of time, as they say. Which means it was in the future. Why is it called the end of time? Because if you remember, if you remember, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. When it says that there are kashas, there are questions that are not possible, that it is not possible to answer them, to answer them because there's not enough time in the world to explain them. These are questions and quagmires, <coughs> and mind pretzels that stem from Cholapana, from the vacant space. Vacant Keviyoho, as it were, from the Godness of Kodesh Baruch. That vacant space is a must to enable the existence of the world. The questions from the vacant space are total stupidity, but they are so profound that there's not enough time to explain how stupid they are. The reason for it is because the very question is not a question.
that it gives a muscle. Uh, you take a little child and you tell that child, imagine there's a room, okay? You've got two windows in the room. You know, and there's a bird in the room. Okay? Now, the window is just are like, you know, holes in the wall. And one window has like a window pane, uh, a glass in the window. So, how are you going to prevent the bird? In which window should you put the pane, the window pane, to prevent the bird from flying out of the room? He said, the right one. He says, yeah, but then it'll fly out of the left one. Okay, so put the left one, but then it'll fly out of the right one. So for a child with a small mind, it's like, an unanswerable quagmire. But somebody who was a goggle, who knows, you don't take a glass from this one and that one, you take, bring a glass from a different place here. She took the other one, the Anfati. In other words, the greatness of the Kasha comes because the mind's too small to understand that the cash is this cash. Two friends playing marbles. They are eight years old. They're no longer little seven year old. They are eight years old. They are like eight years old. Important age. Eight years old. They're playing uh, marbles. <clears throat> the game is that there's a certain line, your marble's over there, my marble's over here. If I hit your marble, I take the marble. Take your marble. Okay? Every kid, of course, has his own favorite marble. Right? I mean, that's, that's my precious, you know, that's my idea. All right. So one kid, bang, hits the other kid's marble. Now, he wants to take the marble. But the marble, that's the other kid's precious. That's his treasure. His magical mar marble. So he wants to give that kid a different marble. Is it, we didn't say that I'm giving you that marble. I'm giving you a marble. I can exchange it. The other kid is saying, we didn't say you can exchange marbles. Therefore, you have to give me this one. There's an argument. <clears throat> There's no answer to this argument. Because one hand, they did not say that you can change. Yeah. On the other hand, they did not say that you cannot change. Now, these kids are 18. They're friends. How can they be friends? They have a problem that had no answer. And they were eight. But it's not Kukasha anymore. Because to begin with, the whole thing was a shtus. So being that we are in this body and we have a limited understanding, so what the questions are like that, the mysteries of the Torah are also like that. There's a limit to what we can understand. It's very terrible. We don't get it. When, you know, those stoppers, you know, like they had, remember there was a, was, a, uh, was a drought in New York. So they gave out these, these kind of stoppers for the shower. 
It made the showers go slower. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was just it's like a, yeah. to save water, you got to take a shower anyhow. Once the water is, you know, you're losing it anyhow. So it's it, it stoppers. It's just like yeah. step down mechanism, kind of like the body, the brain, the nervous system are such step down mechanisms, stoppers. They don't allow the brain to just rip. Oh, it's lovely because we're always going to take off those stoppers and then we understand. Rebbe says, anybody who wants to taste the hidden light, in other words, the secrets, the mysteries of the Torah that will be revealed in the future, which are basically mysteries that there's not enough time in this world to, to acquire, to, to understand. There is a way to get it in this world as well. What does it need to be done? Now he has to elevate <coughs> the trait of awe, of fear of Hashem, to its root. Interestingly enough, in Terya Dalet, we learned that you have to elevate the honor of Hashem to its root in the Yira. Now we're talking about elevating the Yira to its root. Yeah. If you do that, you say it to Sisu Torah. So now what we're going to learn is how you elevate the era, the awe, the fear of Hashem to its root. And they will also explain how this brings about the, the possibility to attain in this world the Torah mysteries that will only be revealed in the future to come, which are called Oregon, the hidden light. Well, see if it's how is it done? How do you elevate the Euro to its root, to its origin? by exercising judgment, trial. How do you know? Kmo shekosov melech bemishpat yamid eretz. Al pipshat, what it means is that a king, how does a kingdom is founded, is, is, is stable, you can live in it by by the king establishing a justice system. There's law and order, but it's also but what is alluded to in this passage is that with mishpat, with judgment, with justice, you are zeicher to erect, to create Eretz. Something which is called Eretz. Eretz u'bchinas Yira. And the land is an aspect of Yira. K'mo shekosu. Eretz yo, the land fear. What is alluded in it is that Yira is an aspect of Eretz. So in here you find that with Mishpat, with judgment, you are to hear. Okay, but why judgment establishes here? Because the Indian of the Mishpat, what the Rebbe is speaking over here is as follows. I know that the person will make a lot of his readiness between him and his maker. Yishpoit Skola Sakov and judge everything that you do. If you should be doing it, and, or you shouldn't do it, is it worth it, worth it for you to do something against the Kodesh Baruch Hu that do, does a service with you every single moment?
כמו שקוסוב, as it is said, what is it, what is it written down here? Good is a person, the, the beginning of the Pasuk is, good is a person who, is, who has compassion, and he lends out, he will weigh carefully his words, his inyonim, his matters, his issues, with, with judgment. And I believe that Rashi says over there that it's good for a person that has compassion for the poor people and he lends them money and his household money and he judges and, and conducts whatever his household expenses and everything, the mishpat, and he has and he's careful on his resources. Don't just spread it out. I mean, you got some money in your pocket, boom, go and buy steaks. You know, it's like that. Right? She said, she is put the idea about smoke all a suck of. Let the person judge and weigh carefully all his business affairs. And with this, he will strip away from him all the fears. The only thing that will that will come up is just clean here. He says, when a person judges himself, he strips away all the extraneous fears from himself. The only thing is left, Hashem, just the fear of Hashem, clean. Another different year. Okay, what's the reason? When a person does not judge himself, then he's being judged in the Shema. Because if there is no judgment down here, Yes, there's judgment up there. This is Midrash Rabba says that. And then she shaved him and saw the when a person is being judged and indicted in the heavenly judgment, Azaya Din, the verdict, Nislabish Bakhola Dvar, then the, the judgment is 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 is, is cloaked in, in, in everything in the world. And all the, all the existences, everything that exists becomes the messenger of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to extract, to exact the judgment from this particular person. To, to do with this person a proper judgment on, on his affairs. As Chazal said on the Apostle, to judgment, everybody stood today, because everybody is a slave. What? means when it is decreed of a person, you know, to pass away. Everybody is your, everybody is your messenger. Every single thing. Every single thing in the world, in the world, every single thing in the world has the capacity to kill that particular person. Once this person has been judged, has been decreed in Shemai to die, everything in the world, all the objects, all everything, it could be a sneeze, it could be allergies, it could be a pen, it could be a pin. It could be his socks, it could be, I mean, anything and everything. Could what, be like Abus? No, just, it's just a, it could be his own socks can kill him. Wow. I don't know, he has a, 
uh, he has a, a little, uh, whatever it is, a little wound in his leg, and his sack got uh, something with, with, with a, 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 you know, this, this, this antibiotic resistant bacteria he puts on his side, boom, done. Or well, somebody, I don't know, plays a game with him, you know, a robber comes to his house and stuff his sack in his mouth and puts tape on his mouth and he chokes to that. Everything in the world can become a messenger to exact the judgment, the verdict of this person. So when there's any kind of punishment, not just death, but any kind of punishment, even tsar, the judgment is mislabish in all the things in the world. And they all become messengers to punish the person. But when a person judges himself, when there is judgment down here, there's no judgment above in, in, in heavenly court. And then, then the Yira does not does not clothe itself in anything in order to wake the person up because he's already awake himself up. Because what is the cause that that the din, you know, is 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 a uh, uh, manifest is manifested in everything in the world. Not I'm not talking about death, I'm not talking about anything. Car breaks down, this, that, whatever. The, the cause for this is for a person to wake himself up and fear Hashem. This world, you're here in this world for a purpose. You're not here to win the NBA Finals. You're here to serve a share. But if a person already judges himself, in other words, he does wrong, does bad things. Sorry, when he does bad things, so the year is establishing everything. This is yo, wake up. But if a person is already judging himself, a person is judging himself. So, to me, this year is already fixed. And it goes up to its roots. You have fear in Hashem, between you and Hashem, that's it. Then the year does not have to be established in anything. It does not have to manifest in anything. You know, to awaken you, because you are here awakening yourself. And then, your, your year, your fear is only the fear of Hashem. All the deficiencies in Yer Shemaim manifest themselves in different years, real or imagined. The more this Yer Shemaim, the less you're afraid from anything else. You know, Blazer, Blazer Bell on his, his life took his guys during the Lebanon War. One into Arab villages, in the Intifada, and they took care of this, you know, whatever it is, in a mosque. With everybody, with, with these guys over there. Didn't care, nothing. They went in, they went out. They were full people, full Arabs. Just went in, did whatever it is, and went out. No fear, none. What was that? No fear. It's not a kasha. Yes. No, kasha. Yeah. no kasha. No fear. Yeah. No fear. If only no fear. You must have been shocked. Yeah. Whatever it is, I mean, you can imagine the people that were with him, his own people were with him. They went. He went to come. He went. Yeah. Ask me, I'll tell you. The first one, number one, it is. Or now. A couple years ago. No, 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 before, before, it was in the father, we all, uh, yeah. 
There are many such stories that uh, just Torah totally didn't care. I think I told the story, but uh, he went to make his way this, and now where's my bridge? Yeah. I told the story. Yeah, so, so. It's a famous story. I've seen it in the books also. Yeah, yes. This guy's trying to love it. Yeah. <laughs> I've come for today.